Well, hello there again, Mr. Griftastic here in Mobile Tech Studio B, and I would like to talk to you today about how we can remotely support student Chromebooks through this extension that should be pushed out to your Chromebook. If not, you need to contact your technology department. It is called Chrome Remote Desktop, all right? And so this little extension that's pushed out works both ways. A, you can remotely control a student's Chromebook or if you wanted to get crazy, the student could remotely control your screen. There's a great video that I'll link in the description by uh, my good buddy Eric Kurtz that shows some teletherapy uh, solution on how the student could remote into your device. You have it set up in a manner to do that. So if you're interested in that, I'm not going to reinvent uh, a superior video uh, made by the great Eric Kurtz. So anyway, I do want to show you how this works and some of my tips and tricks along the way uh, for you remoting a student device. You also have to remember what my great uncle Ben told me. With great power comes great responsibility. You now have the ability to remotely control a student Chromebook. So use that power for good and use it wisely. All right, so in short, we're gonna get started by locating the Chrome Remote Support link. In this instance, I've created a link inside the bookmark bar for the school district so that it's easily accessible for everyone. All right, ask your technology uh, company or your tech support person or your uh, Google admin. They can create bookmarks for you to make that appear just super easy so you don't have to do it in the extension. All right, then you're gonna have your student select the remote support page. All right, there's gonna be two options there. One says access, the other says remote support. You're gonna have the student click remote support. They're gonna click generate code. They're going to give you that code. You're going to either type it or paste it, paste or type, whatever works for you, that code into that give support section of the thing, of the uh, web page. Then you're going to have the student click share. And then from there, you are remotely supporting the page. Just remember, don't click stop supporting until you're ready. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like here. So I'm inside my teacher computer. And I have this little extension right up here in the top corner. It says Chrome Remote Desktop. Now, as I said, I also, for this school district, created a link to this web page here. So I'm going to click on this just to show you what it looks like. Um, resist the urge right down here. Resist the urge to just click install right off the bat. Not something you want to do. You might not even have rights to do it. So don't click there. Okay, resist that urge. Um, from the student's perspective, this is what you're going to do. You're going to type in this support code that they're going to give you. Okay, so let's jump over to the student side of things and take a look at that. Again, we went up here where it said remote access and remote support. We clicked on remote support because that's what we want to offer. Okay, so let's jump over to the student Chromebook side of things here. Uh, let's get a little different perspective there. There we go. So I'm remotely controlling the student Chromebook here. If we wanted to take a look at what this looks like right here, I'll show you. Uh, we're remotely controlling the student's Chromebook. And so what we're going to do is we're instructing our student to go up to our bookmarks bar. Okay. And then we're going to have them scroll down and select remote support. Again, they could also go up to that little extension right up there at the top of the screen. Click that and click on that Chrome remote desktop icon. They could click either of those. Again, I made a link. I made it easy for the students just to bookmark. Okay. And then right here, what we want to have the student do is click this button that says generate code. Okay. They're going to generate code and then they're going to get this code right here. This code, you can see this five minute countdown timer right there. It's only good for five minutes. That doesn't mean you have five minutes to remotely control the student. That means that that code is active for five minutes. And then after that, it's going to reset and they're going to have to generate another code. All right. So you're either going to have the student click this copy button. All right. They're going to copy it to the clipboard. Maybe you're talking with them in a Google Meet and they paste that in there and that makes it easy for you to communicate to you, the student. Otherwise, we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way, which is... Uh, look off of their screen. At least I am going to have to look off of their screen and type that number in there. So 915400972311. Okay. And then all I have to do on my teacher desktop is click connect. Okay. So it's saying remote session support happening now. Now, if I jump back over to the student desktop, this is the message that popped up here. It says, would you like Mr. Griftastic yours truly, to remotely see and remotely control your computer, the student clicks yes. 
Okay, so the other thing, let's jump and take a look at my top down view. So right here in this window that or right there at the bottom of the screen, it popped up and it said, hey, uh, to stop doing this, to stop remotely controlling the screen click stop right now. Okay. So anyway, you probably don't want to click that until you're ready to stop. All right. But I'm going to show you, look, I don't have my hands on the device. And from the teacher screen, ooh, I don't know if you can barely see my mouse there. Look at that. I'm opening up a new window. Look, no hands. Right. So I am remotely controlling this from my desktop. So this works really well on a Windows device or Mac or another Chromebook, or they even make an iPad and an Android uh, app. So you can remotely control devices using this remote desktop app. Okay. So once you're in here, you have all the same settings. You can open up a new tab. You can guide the student to whatever they need to do. Okay. You could turn on and off extensions. As soon as you're done, though, you go back to this page that says Chrome Remote Desktop and you hit Stop Sharing. Okay. You could also click this little icon right down here where it says One Notification. If you click this, it's going to pop up and say Stop. Fun fact, though, if you are remotely controlling a Chromebook and you close the window that says Remote Desktop Support, you will kill the remote. Okay, so it's going to stop right there. So that's another way to do it is to just close the windows. I've had very frustrating conversations with parents and students and even teachers over the years. And as I'm remoting in, they go ahead and close that window right off the bat. Don't do that. It kills the session. Okay, so that is how we can remotely control student Chromebooks with this extension. If you need some assistance having the, or using this extension installed, there's going to be another video right down, uh, let's say right here, that's going to walk you through how to install that. Now, if your school district has this set up where they control uh, what is being pushed out, then you need to let them know that this is the one that they, uh, this is the one that you want to use to do this. So to my knowledge, this is the only application currently that allows you to remotely control Chromebooks as of September 29th, 2020, but there may be others eventually. A um, couple of tips, tricks, hints. Um, let the parent know whenever you have remotely controlled the student's device. So I've, I've had some uh, safety and security issues where, you know, I've been remotely assisting and then a parent walks into the room and say, the, the tech guy is controlling your computer. Can he do that at any time? No, the student or the remote D has to gain or share control of that. You can't just take over the device and do that. You have to uh, give permission, okay? You have to have the student or whoever you're remoting grant you permission. And as soon as that's closed, they can't do it automatically, okay? So it's, it's a request support and then allow that to work, okay? Second tip is if you can do this, that means a student can do this to another device, okay? So what I've done for this school district is I've prevented other students from clicking on the uh, remote support option. Okay, so I found the link and I made it so that when they click on that uh, option, it says, I'm sorry, it's blocked. Okay, so the student cannot provide support to another student or anybody else. Okay, so something you might, might want to float past your technology um, or Google admin or the technology company or person who's overseeing your school district. All right, so just two quick two quick tips there. And as always, if you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. In addition, you can follow me on the Twitter at Mr. Griftastic. And as always, have a Griftastic day. Thanks.